I'd like to tell you five stories about Captain Beaky and his band. Now, the first one is called The Search for Hissing Sid. Captain Beaky and his band were all at Artful Owl's hollow tree house for tea. The late afternoon sun shone through a big knot hole and Reckless Rat pulled his hat down over his long nose to stop it getting sunburned. What are we going to do about hissing Sid? said Timmy Toad, taking a big bite of chocolate cake. Toad was always very brave when there was no danger, and Owl's house was a very safe place. Not only was it inside a tree, but it was very high up inside a tree. It's time we did something, said Toad, but his mouth was so full no one quite heard what he said. Don't drop crumbs on the floor, said Owl crossly, and producing a small dustpan and using his wing like a brush, he bent down and swept them up. Captain Beaky sat back and gave a yawn. <gasps> oh, the woodland folk can't sleep, he said, in case Slippery Sid slithers into their houses and gives someone a bite. I can sleep, said Batty Bat. He never kept me awake. That's because you're always hanging from an high branch, said Reckless Rat. I always think, said Toad, that it's a very dangerous way to sleep. I mean, what if Bat lets go of the branch in his sleep? If he does, said Owl, he'll fall on something very soft, his head. Well, look, never mind about Bat's soft head, said Captain Beaky. We're here to talk about hissing Sid. Here, here, said Reckless Rat. Well, come on, said Captain Beaky. Let's have some ideas. Captain Beaky always asked the rest of the band for their ideas. There were two reasons for this. First, one of them just might have a very good idea, or even a bad idea. And the second reason was that Captain Beaky very often didn't have any ideas at all. But as he was their leader, he didn't want anyone to know that. Come on, he said. Someone must have an idea. What about you, Rat? I, I see your nose is twitching. Well, said Rat, I could. I mean, that is if I saw Sid shiver by, I could. That is, if he didn't see me first, I could. Well, that is, to be precise, I could practice for a bit. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Al, get on with it. What could you do? Well, I could lasso it with my tail, said Rat. An old uncle of mine showed me how to do it when I was little. He could make his tail into a lasso and remove a piece of cheese from a mousetrap without going anywhere near it. You introduced me to him once, said Bat. Now, what was his name again? I forget. Tailless Uncle Fred, said Rat. I'm putting good ideas down in this notebook, said Captain Beaky, and I'm not writing that one down. Bat suddenly gave an excited squeak. I've got one, he said. Captain Beaky licked the end of his pencil. What is it then? Well, said Bat, I'll get a boulder and I'll fly up in the sky and then when Sid scissors down underneath, I'll drop it on his head. Oh, good idea, said Timid Toad, dropping more crumbs on the floor in his excitement. Rat nodded approvingly. How will you lift it off the ground? said Owl, as he swept up the crumbs by Timid Toad's feet. Captain Beaky, who had just been writing B for Boulder, changed his mind and wrote, Bad idea. Well, we won't find Sid while we're sitting here, said Owl, putting his dustpan away. Oh, yes, that's true, said Timid Toad, looking very relieved. We've got to go out and search the wood, continued Owl. Uh, we'll send Bat up in the sky to look down, and when he spots him, he can send us a signal. Oh, that's it, said Captain Beaky. Five of us should be enough to overpower him. Toad put his hand up. Ah, I think, said Toad, that four's enough. If there were five, we might get in each other's way. In fact, I think I should hold back and only jump on him if he seems to be winning. Toad's got something there, said Artful Owl. We only need four of us. Not that I'm scared, said Timmy Toad hurriedly. No, 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 said Owl. You'll be left all by yourself. Timmy Toad tried to look disappointed. Oh, dear, he said. I do wish I were coming with you. And getting to his feet and clenching his fist, he shadow boxed with an imaginary foe. Al shook his head. You won't be with us, said Al, because we shall be using you as bait to trap hissing Sid. Bait, said Timmy Toad. Oh, dear. He collapsed back into his chair, looking rather pale. Uh, are you sh sure it's a good idea? He stammered. Well, it must be a good idea, said Captain Beaky. Look, I've written it down in the book. He held the notebook under Toad's nose. Toad read the words. Toad to be bait to capture Hissing Sid. And then in even bigger letters, this is a good idea. Lest anyone has a better idea, said Captain Beaky, this is the idea we'll use. Oh, uh, someone must have a better idea, said Toad. Uh, uh, what about you, Al? Haven't you got a better idea? This was my better idea, said Al. 
When do we do it? said Reckless Rat. I just feel like a fight. Uh, I think I'm free next week, said Toad. Uh, nearer the end of the week, that is. I think I'm rather busy at the beginning of the week. I think tonight would be rather a good night to do it, said Captain Beaky. There's a full moon. Toad put his hand up. Toad agrees with tonight, said Captain Beaky. Now what about you others? The others put their hands up too. I only put my hand up, said Timmy Toad, because I want to remind you all that if there's a full moon, Hissing Sid would see us all, which makes it a bad idea. But as his mouth was full of cake again, nobody heard him. So that night, Timmy Toad, his eyes popping with fear, sat alone somewhere in the wood, while Captain Beaky and his band waited for a signal from Batty Bat, who was busy flying above the moonlit woods. Owl, who had been listening keenly, with his hand cupped to his ear, suddenly heard Bat's signal. Dot, dot, dash, 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 dot. And then a lot of dots and a lot of dashes. No, said Owl. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. What's up? whispered Rat. It's hissing Sid, said Owl. He's found Toad. Oh, good show, said Captain Beaky. Let's go and rescue him. I'm afraid we're too late, said Owl. He swallowed him. Swallowed Toad, said Rat. What are we going to do? But before anybody could think what to do, there was a loud noise in the undergrowth, and before their startled eyes, hissing Sid appeared. His eyes were crossed, and he had a very, very strange look on his face. What's more, he wasn't slithering like he usually did. He was going along in a series of big jumps, and right in the middle of his long body was a lump. It's Toad, whispered Owl, in hissing Sid's tummy. You're right, said Captain Beaky. Oh, quick, men, we mustn't let him get away. And turning on his heel, he ran headfirst into a tree and sat down with a bump. Ow! My head, he said. Ooh, that hurt. Quick, cried Reckless Rat. Let's get a long stick and stop Sid going back down his hole to hide. And so off they chased, with Captain Beaky rubbing his head, and they followed the noise that hissing Sid made as he bounced through the woods back to where he lived. There's his home, shouted Captain Beaky as Sid headed for a big hole by the river bank. But to their surprise, Sid went straight past it. It's Toad jumping, shouted Rat. Sid can't stop. Keep it up, Toad, they shouted. And then, led by Captain Beaky, they chased on through the night. Finally, they found hissing Sid lying down in a clearing with his mouth open, gasping. <sighs> help, said a small voice. Help, help, it's me, Toad, help. Captain Beaky reached down inside the snake's big mouth and pulled out a very frightened-looking toad. Oh, well done, toad, said Rat. That was very brave of you. Fancy jumping into a snake. I agree, said Bat. That's just my sort of plan. Toad's one of the bravest animals in the wood. What do you mean, brave, said Toad? I, I jumped into what I thought was a hollow stick. <laughs> Nonsense, said Captain Beaky. You're just saying that to be modest. And he patted Toad on the back and smiled at him proudly. Am I, said Toad? Yes, I suppose I am. Yes, there's no point in being modest, is there? Yes, I admit it was rather brave of me. And then he jumped into Owl's arms as Hissing Sid gave a wheezing cough and wriggled off as fast as he could. I don't think we'll see him again for some time, said Captain Beaky. I think you gave him a very nasty shock. Well done again. And off they marched through the wood, singing their song, the main words of which are, the bravest animals in the land are Captain Beaky and his band. Bum, 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 And as it had started to rain, Bat flew above them, holding his wings flat, just like an umbrella, to keep them dry. Well, that was Owl's idea, of course. And as for Timid Toad, he marched at the front with Captain Beaky and told them all how he had deliberately jumped into Sid's mouth when he found him yawning. He told them so many times that by the time they got home, they were all yawning too. Oh. My next story is called The Trial of Hissing Sid. Captain Beaky and his band were having a meeting at Artful Owl's house. It was obviously a very special occasion, because Reckless Rat's hat and overcoat were very nicely brushed and pressed. Batty Bat had combed his hair, and Captain Beaky was wearing his best naval cap with a brightly polished badge, and Timid Toad was washing his muddy feet in a small basin of water. <sighs> I do wish, said Artful Owl with a sigh, that you'd wash your feet before you come to my home, Toad. I did, said Timmy Toad, but they got muddy again on the way. 
Al sighed again, and turning to the mirror, propped up against the wall, he gazed at his reflection. How do I look? said Artful Al. That white curly wig and those glasses make you look very stern indeed, said Captain Beaky. And, said Al proudly, can you see my black legal coat has a beautiful red lining? You really look the part, said Rat admiringly. I am the part, said Al. I am legal prosecutor at the trial of Hissing Sid. And you, my friends, are to be witnesses of his evil deeds. Bat scratched his head. What evil deeds are they? Oh, my memory is very bad. Captain Beaky produced a piece of paper. I've written them down to remind us, he said. Let me see. The stealing of Man to the Mouse's candy, abducting a cuckoo, and generally frightening people. Toad put his hand up. Uh, don't forget he swallowed me. That has to be a crime, and it's called, um... Now, what could it be called? I know, said Batty Bat. Toad aside. That's a good name for it, said Al. It's quite clear I've got an open and shut case. Oh, good, said Captain Beaky. You can put this piece of paper in it. I mean, said Al, adopting a pompous legal voice, that when I produce the evidence of the evil deeds, the judge will send him to jail. Reckless Rat reached into the pocket of his long black overcoat and produced an old watch. Time we were at the Woodland Court. In fact, Al spent so long looking at himself in the mirror, we're already late. And so, led by Captain Beaky, they ran down the long and winding wooden staircase, out of the front door and into the wood. In the Woodland Courtroom, Lord Chief Justice Pig looked at his big cuckoo clock on the wall and banged his small wooden hammer impatiently on the desk. Beaky and his band are late, he said. I am not very pleased. And he gave a loud snort to show how displeased he was. They've arrived, sir, shouted P.C. Sparrow. Come on there, we haven't got all day. Captain Beaky, Owl, Rat, Bat and Timid Toad ran up the courtroom steps. They had run so fast that Captain Beaky's best hat had caught in a bramble bush and got torn and the badge was missing. Bat's hair was standing up on end and Rat's best overcoat was covered in leaves and bits of thistledown and fern. And Timid Toad had one very muddy foot because he'd hopped to the court on one leg to try and keep at least one foot clean for the trial. There was a loud hiss from the dock and glancing toward it they saw Hissing Sid with lots of handcuffs all over him and on either side of him, all in black, were two jackdaw jailers. I protest! hissed Hissing Sid. At this trial, I am innocent. <coughs> Silence in court, said Lord Justice Pig. And then to show how annoyed he was, he shouted, <coughs> Silence again. But the twelve rabbits in the jury kept up an excited conversation amongst themselves. Justice Pig banged his hammer twice. Order, order, <coughs> order, he cried. Timmy Toad put his hand up. I'll have a lemon tea, he said. Make mine an ice cream, said Betty Bat. A chocolate one if you've got it. I mean silence in court, shouted Justice Pig. Now who is defending Hissing Sid? I am, said the deep rasping voice of QC Crow. I am defending this innocent snake from these ridiculous accusations made by Captain Beaky and his silly little man. How would you like to punch in the ear, said Reckless Rat. Justice Pig banged his hammer again. I won't have talking in my court, he snorted. The very next person to speak will be thrown out. Artful Owl took off his wig and waved it to attract Justice Pig's attention. I trust, my lord, said Owl, as prosecution that I shall be allowed to speak. <laughs> yes, 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 of course, said Justice Pig. Now get on with it. What evil deeds has the prisoner done? <laughs> Artful Owl turned to Captain Beaky. Uh, Captain Beaky, pass me that piece of paper with the evil deeds on, will you? Captain Beaky took off his hat and peered inside. I, I think it's gone, he said. Oh, no, I remember now. I gave it to Rat. Reckless Rat put his hand in his pocket. Oh, yes, said Rat. Yes, yes, it's in here somewhere. And he searched for a moment, and then he started to look anxious. Come on, come on, said Owl impatiently. There must be something in there. There is, said Rat. A large hole. I keep meaning to get it mended. Try the other pocket, whispered Captain Beaky, and be quick. Reckless Rat tried the other pocket and gave a smile of relief. Here we are, he said, and handed Artful Owl a crumpled piece of paper. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, said Al, in his loudest and most pompous voice, the crimes which the evil snake has been accused of are written down on this paper, and they are as follows. That he did willfully, 
Al glanced down at the paper. Collect washing from the laundry? Mend hole in overcoat, buy cheese? He looked up surprised. What is this, he said. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, said Rat. That's part of my shopping list. QC Crow held up his hand. I think, my lord, you will agree there is no case to answer. Just a minute there, said Reckless Rat. It's in here somewhere. And taking off his hat and overcoat, assisted by Timid Toad and Captain Beaky and Bat, he searched all the pockets inside and out, and the lining, and inside his hat, but without success. Artful Owl took the coat and hat and hung it over the rail of the dock and addressed the judge. <clears throat> Despite the fact, Your Lordship, said Owl, that we cannot find the legal document to which I have referred, my memory is such that I can tell you the crimes that the accused has committed. Captain Beaky tugged at the end of Owl's long black coat. I'm afraid we're too late, he whispered. What do you mean, said Owl. Look at the jury, said Captain Beaky. What's wrong with the jury, said Timid Toad. Rabbits make very good jurors, provided they've got plenty of lettuce and a carrot or two. Well, they were twelve when we started, said Captain Beaky. Look at them now, they've multiplied. Well, what, three, four, five, six, seven, at least twenty-three. Twenty-four. <laughs> snorted Justice Pig. There's one under my chair here. This trial is most unfair, said QC Crow. These new arrivals are far too young to know good from bad. I say that this trial should be stopped here and now, and I submit that my client is innocent. With a sweep of his arm, he pointed at the dock. But the dock was empty, except for two jackdaw jailers handcuffed together. Good heavens, he's gone, said Rat. He spits my best overcoat and my best set. Good heavens, said Captain Beaky. He's disguised himself. Justice Pig leant forward and pointed to the jailers with the hammer. Why didn't you jailers call out, he said, and tell us that the, the villain was escaping? You told us not to talk in court, one of them replied. Lord Justice Pig went red in the face, and then purple, and then to stop himself saying anything he shouldn't say in court, he took off his wig and stuffed it into his mouth. Quick, men, cried Captain Beaky. We've got to catch that slippery snake. And leading the way, he ran down the courtroom steps and out into the woodland, followed by the others. I'll fly up in the sky, said Bat, and I'll send a signal down in Morse code the moment that I spot him. We must search high and low, said Captain Beaky. I agree, said Owl, and not forgetting all points in between. After a lot of running to and fro, and fro and to, and twice to and fro, which of course is four, Captain Beaky and his band, that is all except Batty Bat, who was just a black dot against the blue sky, paused not far from the river bank, panting. Oh, it's no good, said Owl. We'll just have to hope that Bat can spot him. I'm not running another step, said Timid Toad. In fact, I'm going to hold my breath and hide behind a tree until he's caught. And before anyone could disagree with Toad's plan, he sat down in the shade of a big tree and took a very large, deep breath and swelled up to twice his normal size and changed colour to match the green of the surrounding grass. A series of ear-piercing squeaks, like a piece of chalk on a blackboard, reached their ears, and looking up, they saw Batty Bat hovering high above them. He started squeaking in Morse code. What does he say? said Captain Beaky. S.O.S., said Owl. I'm afraid it means snake out of sight. Captain Beaky took off his hat and fanned himself. Phew, he said. It's getting very warm. Look, how about going for a sail on my biscuit tin, the HMS most leaky? Artful Owl nodded. A good idea, he said. This wig's making my head itch. And taking off his legal wig, he put it in his pocket. Hang on, said Rat. What about my hat and my coat? Who needs a hat and coat in this weather, said Owl. Now, if you really want to wear a coat, you can have mine. And taking off his long legal coat, he handed it over to Reckless Rat. That's most kind of you, said Rat. It's really quite the best present I've ever had. It's not a present, said Al. It's just too hot for me to wear. I shall want it back again as soon as we get home. And so they went down to the river and boarded Beaky's biscuit tin. Hoisting the handkerchief sail, they got a long stick and pushed themselves away from the bank and out into the river. It was only then, and Rat was first to notice it, that although Timid Toad had come with them, he was still nearly twice his usual size and his eyes were nearly popping out of his head. Oh, oh look at Toad, said Rat. He's still holding his breath. Oh, dear, said Captain Beaky. He's held it so long that he can't let it out. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? Artful Owl reached down into the boat and produced from a great assortment of bits and pieces that were always at the bottom a large pepper pot. 
This should do the trick, he said, apart from which the wind has dropped and we need the extra breeze. Taking Toad by the arm, he made him stand behind the ship's sail, and holding the pepper pot above Toad's head, he shook it. Toad gave the loudest sneeze anyone had ever heard, and he kept on sneezing, and the sail pulled the HMS Most Leaky along faster than it had ever been before. The sheer joy of sailing on such a lovely day made them all forget about the stuffy old courtroom and hissing Sid. But from a dark hole in the riverbank, two beady eyes beneath the brim of Rat's hat watched them as they disappeared round a bend in the river. And from that dark, cool hiding place came a long sigh of relief. Now I'm going to tell you about Captain Beaky's search for summer. The first signs of winter had come to the wood, and the squirrels were busy scurrying about with as many nuts as they could carry. Above the fields, a crowd of swallows were making a final circle under the grey afternoon sky before they departed for the winter. A squirrel, running along one of the narrow woodland paths, carrying an armful of nuts, suddenly stopped and pricked up his ears as a strange puffing, panting and thumping sound that was getting nearer transfixed him to the spot. And then an extraordinary sight met his startled gaze. Captain Beaky in running shorts, puffing and panting as he ran. The sight gave the squirrel such a shock that he threw his armful of nuts in the air and ran up the nearest tree. And from that vantage point he observed that Captain Beaky was being followed, also in running shorts, by Artful Owl and Reckless Rat and the trio were being followed in turn by another pair of running shorts that were hopping along without, as far as the squirrel could tell, anybody being in them. It was quite a relief to him when he heard Timid Toad's voice call from inside the hopping shorts, I say, fellas, hold on, wait for me. Captain Beaky stopped. How can we ever get fit, he panted, if every five minutes we have to stop the toad? Reckless Rat blew on his hands and rubbed them together. It's all Al's fault, he said. He shouldn't have lent Toad his shorts. They're too big for him. In fact, they're so big he keeps getting lost in them. We've already had to go look for him twice. One must dress correctly, said Al. After all, Captain Beaky and his band are regarded as the bravest and most intelligent animals in the wood. And when we go jogging, we must be seen to be dressed in the right clothes. Oh, quite right, said Captain Beaky. Well, I agree, said Rat, that we are brave going out in these shorts. But I'm not so sure that it's very intelligent. Look at my kneecaps. They've gone blue and they're jumping up and down. At that moment, Al's spare running shorts hopped past them. Wait for me, called Toad. Wait for me. We've stopped, shouted Captain Beaky. Come back here. The gaily coloured shorts stopped and Timid Toad climbed out. I'm fed up with these morning runs, he said. Look at these bumps on my head where I keep banging into things. We've got to keep fit for the winter, said Al. Otherwise we'll all get coals. I'd like to be in bed with a cold, said Rat. At least I'd be warm. Al flapped his wings across his chest. It is getting a bit chilly. Let's all go back to my place and I'll light a fire and we can have tea. Well, I was thinking of running a few more miles, said Captain Beaky. But if you all want to give in and go home for tea, I suppose I'll have to join you. And running energetically on the spot to show how many more miles he could have run if he'd wanted to, he shouted, Right, men, follow me and pulling down his naval cap firmly over his ears to keep them warm, Captain Beaky led the way to Owl's house. The arrival of winter was of great concern to another well-known person in the wood, Hissing Sid the snake. Like all snakes, Hissing Sid always slept right the way through the winter, with his big old alarm clock set to ring on the first day of spring. Hissing Sid had already wound up his alarm clock and was just about to go to bed when he noticed a leak in the wall of his underground hideaway. I always knew I was too near the river, hissed Sid. That drip's going to keep me awake all winter. Then wrapping his scarf 27 times tightly round his neck, he slid out of his hole to find something to make his home waterproof. Less than ten minutes later, he was on his way home again with a big smile on his face, for held tightly between his teeth was the end of a big plastic rubbish bag. This will make a wonderful Leaping bag, hissed Sid to himself. What a stroke of luck. But just at that moment, Sid's luck ran out. For to his ears came the sound of running feet, accompanied by much gasping and panting, and then to his surprise, Owl's running shorts hopped into view. <gasps> Haunted shorts, said Sid. Oh no, help, help, 
and dropping his bag, he slithered off as fast as he could. Look at that, said Artful Owl, littering the woods, disgraceful, and bending down, he picked up the rubbish bag, rolled it up, and put it under Rat's arm. We'll take it home and throw it away. It's already been thrown away, said Rat. We'll throw it away where people can't find it, said Owl. Well, we'll be able to find it, said Rat, because we'll be the ones what will have thrown it away. We'll get Toad to throw it away, said Captain Beaky. He'll never remember where it is. Now, come on, my feet are freezing. A short while later, they were all sitting round the fire in Owl's hollow treehouse. The fireplace consisted of an old copper frying pan in the centre of the room, on which a bundle of twigs burned brightly. Whiffs of smoke drifted up towards the ceiling and disappeared into the dark hollow tree trunk above their heads. Rat searched in a small paper bag and produced a chocolate. I'm uh, <coughs> afraid it's nearly the last one, he said, popping it into his mouth. I don't like the winter, said Toad. Why do we have to have one? So that someone else can have the summer, said Owl. You mean, said Reckless Rat, that our summer is going on somewhere else while we're here? Of course, said Owl, it's miles and miles away. Uh, too far to walk, I suppose, said Captain Beaky. Much too far, said Owl. It's on the other side of the world. Just then they heard a high-pitched cough, and Batty Bat flew down from the chimney. I say, squeaked Bat, do let me know next time you're lighting a fire, and I'll sleep somewhere else. I'm covered in soot. We'll go and have a wash, then, said Rat. Then you can hang out somewhere and drip dry. And producing one more sweep from the bag, he popped it into his mouth, leant forward, and threw the paper bag into the fire. But instead of falling into the flames, it floated towards the ceiling, and they all gazed at it as it hovered for a moment, and then it disappeared up the chimney. I say, said Captain Beaky, that's rather strange. Not at all, said Al. Fill a paper bag with hot air, and it's bound to rise. Then leaping to his feet, he said, Ah, oh, of course. What a good idea. Why didn't I think of it before? I say, gosh, I'm clever. Uh, what is it? said Toad. Uh, what good idea? Uh, the one I've just had, said Owl. Now, how would you all like to come and find the summer with me? You said it was miles away, said Captain Beaky. Not by balloon, said Owl. We haven't got a balloon, said Rat. We have, said Owl, one large plastic rubbish bag. All we have to do is fill it with hot air and it'll float off. How do we fill it with hot air? said Timmy Toad. Simple, said Rat. We'll get Owl to talk into it. I'll ignore that, said Owl. I say, said Captain Beaky, that sounds jolly exciting. When shall we give it a try? First thing in the morning, said Owl. 